put Wavy back in the box because she's absolutely terrified. I'm gonna read this to you guys real quick. Jackson Dixon Duel, two miles west. On the Jeff Burr farm in Second Poplar Bottom, the site of the duel fought May 30th, 1806. Andrew Jackson was wounded. Half a mile west of site is Will Tyler Farm where Charles Dickens, Dickinson died. Miller's Buttermilk Spring is south of Highway 75, two miles on the old Burr farm. And yeah. <laughs> If that means anything to anybody. <laughs> well, howdy, guys and gals. It's been a while, I think. Took about almost two weeks off the first time in a long time making videos and I thought I'd quickly I take a couple minutes and just kind of tell you why <clears throat> so someone let us park the barge at their dock in Tarpon Springs nice lady I, I won't mention her name because I didn't ask but uh, nice lady and we my buddy from Kentucky came down from Florida and I offloaded about, I don't, I'm, I'm going to guess 400 pounds worth of stuff off the boat. Uh, I brought way too much stuff. And people, uh, companies have been sending us stuff. That's in a whole other story in a video I'll tell you later. <laughs> but uh, I had to get it off the boat. I mean, I was just tripping over it and, you know, the boat was overloaded. And we're going to be doing the East Coast here pretty soon. So I, I want to have it in, uh, have the best chance we can to succeed. And so we drove up north, uh, and I also found a 20-foot pontoon boat on a trailer with a really good motor on it, a Suzuki 90-horse EFI four-stroke, and it was it was so cheap. It was, it was a giveaway. It was it was. I, I don't buy stuff unless it's they're screaming deals. It needs some cleaning up. I'll put a picture of it in this video, but. Uh, we towed that home. <clears throat> My buddy and I just split expenses because he was going up. To, uh, well, we went north and we looked at a, a shanty boat. I guess you could call it a shanty boat or a barge or um, a houseboat. And I'll show you some pictures as well. And you're gonna, you guys will see a lot more of it. It's a really cool boat. Um, I've known about it for a couple of years. Um, the, the person that built it, tragically, uh, died the day they launched it. He, I don't know the whole story, uh, and he was fairly young, early 60s, and he got cancer. And he, But he built this boat up with big dreams and never got to live them, which is always a, a worry, always a big concern, I think, for myself and for others. I mean, there's no guarantee of nothing, and retirement's been canceled in America, I think, unless you're one of the fortunate ones. So... Uh, do it while you can. That's my little PSA for this video. Um, but yeah, really cool boat. Everything's brand spanking new. It's got amenities that mine I haven't even dreamed of on mine, like an on-demand water heater. And you'll see. I will do a nice detailed video of it this summer because my buddy is planning to come up to the Northland and we're going to have some adventures together. So, so yeah, that's what we've been doing. Been on the road for about a week. Came back down to Kentucky. I'm just walking around this church here, <laughs> uh, and uh, and then I just uh, got, I brought the scooter, and now I'm making my way back to Tarpon Springs, back to Florida. We're trying to take the smallest roads possible, as you probably have already seen in this video. So, yeah, and it's so far so good. It's a rainy day, but I don't care. It's still warm, and and we've been finding really good roads. 
you know, I always, let me turn the phone around. <laughs> I'm going to turn the phone around for a second. Wavy's wearing her squirrel sweater that we got in Key West, I think, last year, a couple of years ago. I don't know. I can't remember. <clears throat> so, yeah, here, I'll just talk while I'm showing you guys this, this old church here. Uh, it doesn't look like it's being used. Looks like it was used fairly recently, but... But yeah, guys, um, we, uh, what was I saying? Oh, you know, it's funny. I, to this day, I'm a seasoned traveler, you know, and I've been traveling more or less my whole life, one way or another. And I'll look at a map, and just a couple days ago, I was like, you know, I'm like, how am I going to make it from Kentucky to Florida and not get run over by a truck or a train or, a, you know, <laughs> struck by lightning or any of the catastrophes that the brain just loves to come up with? And then, you know... We get out here, and it's it's great. This is such a, I mean, we're on an exceptionally nice route right now, but, but uh, and who knows, you know, it'll probably take, it's going to take three more days, I'm, I'm guessing, to get back down to Florida. But the point is, it always works out better than you think, and yet I never can get that through my deeper self and just not worry and have a little faith. I do my best. Maybe that's why I like these churches. I'm going to turn the phone around one more time. You know, any all all people who travel, I imagine, ask this question. Uh, you know, why? Why do we do what we do, right? <laughs> Even if you're not an adventurer, you're probably asking the question, why? why? It's like that song. This is not my beautiful house. This is not my beautiful wife. This is not my big car. <laughs> we said the talking heads. That's a great song. <laughs> uh for me, in a nutshell, I could make a whole pontifications and paradise video about this, and maybe I will someday if I feel inspired. But uh, I'm always trying to say the unsayable, you know. But uh, I, uh, the reason why I like getting out here like this is I just feel closer to God. Um, I, it, it just it feels meaningful, and and what I think it is is that when when your life becomes very personal, when it, when you're you're by yourself, you know, unless you're with someone who's really good company, like you're. I'm going to try to hold it with this hand. Uh, you know, when you got a good partner, which is getting rarer and rarer. And rarer um, I think you can pull it off too. But, you know, when you're by yourself with your dog and you're kind of doing it by the seat of the pants and there's not too much comfort, you're not just running from warm hotel room to warm hotel room and, you know, air-conditioned cab of a big, beautiful car and a big, beautiful house. Um, it, it just puts you more in touch with reality and and I just feel closer to the creation God's creation and, and God himself so that's it in a nutshell for me it's, it's, it's so personal that it can't really be expressed I can't express it to you truly you know I think unless you have experienced something like it also and then you just kind of know what I'm trying to say and, uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't, I just, I crave it. I crave these meaningful little excursions that remind me that life is worth living, I guess. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. <laughs> We're only on this rock in space for a little while, so. Okay, guys, uh, I could go on always, but I'm not. I'm going to walk this beagle a little bit more, get a little poop and pee out of her, and, uh, and we're going to crawl back on the scooter. We're going to keep going. We're heading back to the shanty boat. We're about halfway done with the loop. Feels like a lifetime ago we left the Northland, but we've been on the water and on this adventure for about four months now, which is amazing. So, okay, guys, thanks for sticking around always. And I hope this is all worth watching. And I'll see you soon. Okay, Beagle. Come on. We're going in, not top. We're going in. Guys, this is an awesome route right here. The Cedars of Lebanon. I think this road just keeps going past the park for quite a ways and it's a perfect little scooter ride. Oh, this is a great route. Look at this. Now this is great.
G-R-A-T-E <laughs> and probably G-R-E-A-T. There's no off-roaders or on-roaders. Could you imagine if there was a network of roads like this all over the country with a speed limit of like 35 miles an hour? Absolutely amazing. I just live on it. <laughs> I just go from shanty boat to scooter. I don't even think I would need a house. Oh hi, my name is Wavy Gravy, star of the channel. I'm kind of a big deal and I like treats. I've got my humans so well trained that we stop at dollar stores and I send them in and he gets me treats. He even knows which ones I like. No, not that one. Yeah, that one. And then I have him bring them out and he's kind of like in zombie mode. He just kind of walks along with a treat. And the one thing I can't get him to do is make any money. So if you send him a few bucks, I'll send him into the dollar store and get me treats. Okay, thanks. I think this is a lock and dam on the Tennessee River. I'm gonna have to look on the map when I go to make this video, but yeah. I've never been on this river and not up this far anyways, so I I don't I'm not kinda I'm not oriented to it, but yeah, I think he would he'd be coming up there and that would be the lock on the other side of that wall. I bet you there's some good fishing in there. Why are there not a bunch of boats in there?
Okay guys, I'm gonna show you where we found a camp tonight before it gets dark here. I will turn the phone around and explain it to you. So there is the Nickajack Lock and Dam and there is a road that comes up over here. You gotta go around the gate. Used to be an open road. And there's actually some park benches over here I'll show you. And even an old trailer, which we might be able to duck into if it rains because it might. <laughs> it's been trying all day. It's been sprinkling and stopping and you know, it's not cold, but I'd rather not sleep in the rain and I didn't bring a tent. Because my tent's just about worn out and I just forgot to grab it off the boat. So <clears throat> we got a tarp, got a couple tarps actually. But yeah, we got, you can listen to the Tennessee River all night. It's flowing. Nice, any sort of moving water is just relaxing to sleep to. This might have been a picnic area at one time is my guess. And there's this trailer. It's totally rusted out, but the roof's pretty solid. And we can get in there if we needed to and get out of the rain. Hope it doesn't rain. And one more thing I wanted to show you guys over here. Because look at this blossom. This tree is blossoming for spring. So spring, I've been seeing this all day. Spring is starting in Tennessee. Good morning guys and gals. I'm going to take a minute or two and try and explain to you what uh, what I was seeing this morning. I'm going to turn the phone around for a second. Okay, so we are at some random gas station. I want to see if I can get a little bit of that guy going away in an old Ford Ranger. <laughs> it's built for... <laughs> That'll... That'll back me up a little bit. Here, I'm gonna turn the phone back around. Okay, so the charger on the scooter for the phone stopped last night, so I was forced to just kinda, and I didn't bring a book because I was trying to really go light on this trip. So it just forced me to like, you know, lay down at like 6.30 at night and watch the clouds dissipate and the stars start to reveal themselves and satellites going by and all sorts of cool stuff in the sky that you never really see anymore because most of the time our heads, including my own, anything I say here, it completely just turns back at me and I, it applies to me, so <clears throat> no offense to anybody. But yeah, you know, our heads just stuck in phones and screens and stuff, you know, it's uh, it's a whole other subject. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I got a good night's sleep. It was really comfortable right at the, right by the Nickajack Lock and Dam on the Tennessee River. And we got up this morning, and I didn't really, I couldn't, didn't know exactly where we were because I can't look at the maps on my phone because I don't have a paper map with me. So we ended up going over the top of 24. There's kind of this area here in the mountains where Ch uh, Chattanooga's at, where it's just a lot of haulers going through. One guy just told me about one, but I couldn't have been able to find it without the maps. And so, so, but what ended up happening was right before I jumped on 24, there's this building. It's called. It's called uh, Tennessee Gorge Ranch, I think, or I will find it. I will put a picture of it. I didn't snap a picture of it because my phone was dead, but I will show you. I'll be able to find it. Um, and I went in their offices, and it was like all these expensive vehicles outside. <laughs> like we're talking Bentleys and stuff like that. And I walk in, and there's this gorgeous young woman receptionist i mean i'm talking like a model okay like she's and she was she had to have she, i bet she's wearing five thousand dollars with the clothes and boots and i mean she was but she's also like this sweet tennessee you know type you know with the thick accent i'm like ma'am i'm so sorry to bother you but can i get one of your coffees there and can i plug my phone in for like five minutes she's like oh yeah sure no no problem go ahead you know she's really friendly right at first she was and so i plugged my phone and i was just trying to you know but i'm looking around and like this place is high-end. I mean, people probably fly into this place, okay? And 
<laughs> quickly she was starting to look at me like, what, how the hell did you end up here, you know? And I'm just, uh, you know, so I went outside and I hung out with Wavy and I drank the coffee and let my phone come to life a little bit. And when I went back in, you know, I'm like, I was just, you know, probably being overly nice and just revealing how I'm not supposed to be there. I'm like, thank you so much, ma'am, for letting me charge my phone. I put everything in the garbage. She's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, okay. You have a nice day, uh-huh. She's just like, please get the hell out of here. <laughs> So I could have left. And so I came over the mountain. I was like, you know, 10 miles or something over the mountain. And I come to, here, I'm going to turn the phone around. And I come to this, I don't even know what this is, if it's even a town. It's near New England, Georgia, I think. It's right on this tri-state line again. Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee. And it's, you know, Sitco gas station. And it's in 10 miles. Here, I'm going to turn the phone back around. In like 10 miles, the entire scene changes, okay? There's, I'm like... I'm in total redneck territory. I'm in good old boy territory is probably a better way to put it. And and I feel so much more comfortable. I went into the store because I can't find any outlets out here. And I said, ma'am, can I plug my phone? Absolutely, darling. Hash, call me hon and darling. And absolutely. Oh, that dog is so cute. What kind of dog is that? You come out and they're petting the dog. And I plug my phone in. And, you know, it's just like I'm welcome. Everyone's welcome. Everyone's welcome here. You're welcome. Absolutely. So I got some gas, and this other woman come up. She's like, your dog sure is cute, and she's talking and stuff. And, you know, I'm just kind of doing my my amateur sociological observations. I can't help it. I'm just, I seem to not belong to this world. I'm always in observation mode as much as I try to fit in somewhere, you know. And, I, and it's just so interesting to me. Just on one side of the mountain, I mean, it just happens to be where I stopped, there is this multi-million dollar ranch you know that they come in and probably who knows shoot what i mean they're shooting stuff and fishing and stuff which is totally cool but i mean I, you gotta i bet you i'll bet you a week there is 20 grand i don't know i'll look <laughs> high end place and then you know over the mountain and then there's the good old boys rolling around their beat up ford rangers barely running and and while i'm in the store they're Cigarettes, lotto tickets, and attached to this place is some kind of slot machine thing going on. And there's this dark room in there, and it's this beautiful day. And people, you know, in there just ding, 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 the one arm bandits. I don't get it. I don't understand it. It sounds like I'm being critical. I'm really not. I'm, I actually kind of feel sorry for people who are so highly addicted to nicotine and the dream of winning the lottery and things like that. I mean, it, it's just, it's, yeah. Anyways, a lot to be said about that. You can never seem to really talk about it without coming across as a total jerk, you know, but, but, uh, I empathize. I also think, you know, I also hold people accountable. Like I hold myself accountable and I want to shake them and say, get a grip on yourself and stop wasting your money. <laughs> you probably hardly have any anyway. Stop smoking it, smoking it up and scratching the tickets and throwing them on the ground it's just it's crazy it's absolutely crazy it's criminal actually it's predatorial to you know whoever builds these social monoliths that just part mostly poor people from their money just it pisses me off actually i don't know how anyone can sleep at night living like that but that's just me so anyways guys that was our morning here we're in Georgia, just barely, and we're going to start meandering our way down Georgia in the general direction of Florida. This is day two on the scooter. The scooter's running fine. The $500 Honda Elite 150, overloaded. I'm so glad I put new tires on it and a new belt before I left, because that's the two things that could probably strand us if it, if it needed to. So, but yeah, uh, it's an adventure. This is real America. America, what a place. I'll have more to say, I promise, but I better... Get on the road before my phone dies. I'll find a place to charge it again, and we'll talk soon. So stay tuned. We're not done yet. Stay tuned.
guys, this place is so beautiful. <laughs> it's spring. It's uh, like March 5th or 6th, something like that. And it is spring here in Tennessee. We are kind of up in the mountains around Chattanooga. I'll show you on the map. You will know kind of where we're at here when I make this video. And, you know, the, the scooter, it's, I was like, man, is, is the is air filter getting clogged or something? It was kind of losing power. And then I realized we got it. We're in a pretty high elevation and it just, you know, that's what happens to little, little bikes with little carburetors and little jets and stuff, but no big deal. Um, but yeah, we're just, uh, we're taking this beautiful route. It, why do we ever take the interstates? I guess because we need to get someplace in a hurry is what it comes down to. But when you can take the time to just take these, these back roads, oh my goodness. Today is such a beautiful day. It's probably 65. You always gotta get a weather report from me. 65 and sunny, waterfalls, 70 miles to the gallon. <laughs> no major catastrophes, we're not getting run over. No flat tires, no broken belts. <laughs> Love and life. Well, you look lazy. Well, howdy guys and gals. I'm gonna show you where we found the camp tonight. This is night two. And this is not as good a site as we found last night. Let me turn the phone around and I'll show you. It'll get the job done, but it's just right off of the highway. I don't even know what, uh, we're in like a town called Villa, Villa Sia or Villa Chilla or something like that in Georgia. And I picked a really bad road today. It was doing, I was doing great until we jumped on 101 South and on the map it, you know, looked to me like it was going to be a good route, but it ended up being no shoulder and <clears throat> I think too close to Atlanta. And there's all these long range commuters that are just doing 100 miles an hour and I'm going to get off it as quick as I can. So we just grabbed this spot tonight and later we will figure out a better route for tomorrow. And I'm wiring up a new phone charger here. So yeah, that's what we're doing tonight. Nothing fancy. Maybe he's just hanging out. We'll be comfortable. A little bit of noise, but we'll survive. morning guys and gals welcome to day three of getting back down to Florida with the scooter Kentucky to Florida and it clouded up you can see there and it started sprinkling this morning probably about five in the morning before it even got light and we didn't bring a tent this time so I just quickly started I just packed up and we just hit the road and uh, I'm glad we did, even though it stopped raining for the moment. But once everything's kind of packed up and I have the rain gear on and stuff, it's it doesn't matter if it's raining really. So, uh, but yeah, the glamorous life. This is a Publix grocery store. I didn't even know it until we pulled back here and then I walked around the corner there, walking away. I'm like, oh, cool. So went in and got a few things. And uh, I'll bet we make it to Florida today. We won't quite make it back to Tarpon Springs, but we'll make it to Florida. And yeah that's about it i don't know i'm not climbing mount everest or something even though i was just watching a video of people who have climbed mount everest and all the people who have died and there's still bodies up there and there's been like ego driven socialites that have climbed it and then jumped on private helicopters <laughs> and left the rest of the people there <laughs> uh you know so maybe just rolling around in a 500 hundred dollar scooter on the back roads of america yeah has more nobility than climbing Mount Everest if you look at it the right way. 
uh, let's see, what else can I say here? I'm probably going to turn this video into kind of a catch-all, talk about a bunch of things. In fact, you know what? I'm, let's take Wavy for a walk, and I will I will just try to get it out right now while I have some coffee in my veins. Sniffy sniff. Okay, this is like the third try. I'm, I'm trying to talk about this. I'm just going to make it real quick. So, for some reason, YouTube just went back and demonetized a big chunk of my back catalog, including some of the episodes from The Great Loop on a Shanty Boat. So, what they do is they let you initially publish it without it being a problem, and it monetizes, and then they come back and they... It just so happens to be all the videos that get the most views. I have... It's episode three that has like 70-something thousand views. And that just triggers something in the AI algorithm to say, you know, we don't want to pay this guy for that. So it goes back and just nitpicks on something. And it, in this case, I think it found a, you know, a little clip of the naked gun where I keep putting it in videos, t you know, to be funny. Um, you know, when he says, everywhere I look, something reminds me of her. Well, that, that now is a problem, apparently, because it just demonetized all the videos that I did that. So... I'll probably go back when I get on my laptop, back on the, the shanty boat, and try to delete that. And sometimes it works, and it'll remonetize it. But you know, and, and I'm not, I'm not on YouTube to make money. But any income you can get while you're doing something like the Great Loop, of course, you know, anybody would try to maximize that, right? So that's annoying. YouTube, I, I don't. It, it's it's such a big subject. I'm not going to try to. You know solve it here but it's just it's it's so frustrating they, they abuse their position they have a monopoly I mean we could I could we could all try to gather over on a different platform one of these alternative platforms which you can't even mention on YouTube or you'll get you know banned so or demonetized bare minimum so but people just don't want to get off YouTube and I get it I, I totally get it. I'm the same way. I watch a lot of YouTube and I rarely go over to other platforms unless I'm following the people that I really like who are so, uh, <laughs> they don't play the game at all. They're totally uncompromising to the point where they just get banned for life off of YouTube. You know, there's a, there's quite a few actually that I, I watch. That seems to be, it's the truth tellers. Uh, so yeah, that's one subject I want to talk about. We'll keep walking here. I'll try to think of some others here just to get them all out of the way in this video so we can just get back to the fun-loving episodes of the Great Loop on a Shanty Boat. There's a nice little walkway here. And the way these just pull it away. Do your thing. Okay, another thing I wanted to talk about quickly. So, ever since we started the Great Loop trip, and the channel has gotten a little bigger. There have been companies reaching out to us. I don't know how they get your, I don't know how it all works, okay? But they've been offering us stuff. Now that's never happened. We've never really been big enough for that to happen. Um, and I, so I foolishly started saying yes to everything. And we got, you know, a big pile of, of stuff. You know, we got a, an e-bike, we got a water purifier. Um, we got, uh, let's see, some, some boots and shoes, which are, you know, all these things are, are very cool, you know, like I'll, I'll take them and I'll use them. But what I didn't realize is all that stuff was going to start piling up on the boat as we catch up to it where they send it ahead. And we had about 400 pounds worth of, 300 pounds worth of stuff, you know, with the e-bike <laughs> weighing a good 70 pounds and the, you know, just all this stuff. And then, of course, we had the inflatable dinghy too underneath the scooter on the front and that was another... 125 pounds I'd say so that's one of the big reasons we went up north for a couple weeks just uh, kind of all the stars aligned and my buddy bought a houseboat a shanty boat up there and was coming within a couple hours and we towed another pontoon boat that I picked up really cheap which will help make me some money to to pay for this trip we're doing right now and stuff like that so we got a lot of stuff off the boat, but to back to my point, um, I've just I've stopped saying yes to anything aside from a couple of things. 
Um, I've told all these companies, I've emailed them. We got a drone too, which you will start seeing really soon. Uh, I just, I just, I've been afraid to, drive, to fly it to tell you the truth. So, maybe, oh, she's doing her business. Um, but I have, I've emailed these companies. I've said, listen, if you just give me a little time, probably even like summer, I will eventually do reviews for these and I'll start mentioning them to you guys, you know, like the water purifier and like the e-bike, but I just can't do it right now. I can't even keep up, obviously can't even keep up with the videos, right? And do a decent job on them. So, and they've all pretty much said that's okay. We also got some solar generators, <laughs> three of them from three different companies. <laughs> and I've had to tell all of them, I will get to them, I promise. I've got so many projects. I've got a school bus build I'm doing, and I've got a puddle jumper, little shanty, 16 foot shanty. I'm gonna eventually show you guys. So we will use them, we will talk about them. It's gonna be a while. I didn't, I wasn't being realistic. And they, almost all of them have understood. There will be a couple things coming up that I am going to talk about, you know, with you guys some, some items, products, you know, uh, while we're on the trip here. One of them is this awesome wood stove that we got from an awesome company based in Minnesota. And uh, also a, a refrigerator freezer, a really nice one, something we've been needing from the start. Maybe doing her business again. <laughs> she just... Oh my goodness, I'm glad I'm walking her. Uh, yeah, Iceco. They are sending us, it's in route right now, this beautiful chest freezer, 12 volt. I mean, these are t high end, top end. It's not about that. I'm not like, I, I mean, I'm prioritizing them a little bit because it's something we can use right now. Like we don't really need an e-bike at the moment, but it will be nice to have an e-bike, you know, eventually. We got the scooter right now, so. Um, but yeah, a, a, a really good fridge and freezer on board, like freezing the fish we hopefully eventually catch on the rest of this trip and beyond, you know. So I'll be talking about those things soon. I'll do it in the most unintrusive way possible. I promise you this channel's never gonna turn into some kind of, uh, you know, ad, <laughs> commercial. <laughs> I've, there's lots of, there's lots of uh, channels that have done that, unfortunately. I guess they just keep, they have no choice or they just never make enough money or whatever. There's even some channels that I normally like that I kind of went that route lately that I realized and it's bumming me out. Some of the stuff they're pushing too is a real bummer. You know, maybe I'll try to talk about that in the backup channel sometime, but having to do with like self-help and therapy and stuff like that. So, um, okay guys, so hopefully all that made sense. Um, some people have real problems, you know, like getting, give, you know, given free stuff in exchange for talking about it there's more situations to be in but I've I've realized that it's it's not straightforward it, it it you have to be in a position to do it when when we're doing this trip we're not in a position to talk about most of this stuff so I'm gonna save it for when we get back so okay guys I'm gonna keep walking wavy here if there's anything else I want to bring to your attention We've been keeping our eyes open for a little town to stop and walk around and show you that has some character. And we came across Pine Mountain, Georgia. Let's take a few minutes and I'll show you around. I'll read this to you real quick. The Iron Horse. In 1879, the Columbus to Rome Railroad made its way over the Pine Mountain to the village of Hood, which had been established by Colonel W.D. Chipley after two years, after two years, Hood vanished almost overnight due to a dispute over land titles. W.D. Chipley then extended the track one mile north to a new town, Chipley. The residents of Chipley had to raise $1,000 for the tracks to be extended. The Iron Horse, as the train was known, helped Chipley become the bo a boom town be because it developed into a first-rate cotton market with one of them with 100 bales a day being shipped out. Chipley's name was changed to Pine Mountain in 1958. This is a perfect day to explore, guys. It's like kind of overcast, right on the verge of raining, and it's uh, not too hot, <laughs> probably 
50 or so. There's the there's the weather report for the video. <laughs> I'm gonna remember this town if I ever want to move down south for a while and see what it's like. This is a cool little town. Pine Mountain, Georgia. What a surprise. On Highway 27. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that little tour of Pine Mountain, Georgia. This was a total surprise. I had no idea. Just passing through and the character of it just pops. You, you probably have seen. It's a cool little town. We were crossing the street over there and this car pulled up and this retired couple rolled down the window and go, do you like Pine Mountain? And I'm like, yeah, I do. And they're like, we retired here from such and such and we love it too and welcome and <laughs> a little icing on the cake. Cool town. If you get to Georgia, check it out. Ouch! Help! Ouch! Okay guys, I'm gonna make this really quick. So it's getting dark here and we're in, uh, I'll have to look at the name of the town, but it's Southern Georgia, almost into Florida. And we're looking for a place to stay tonight and it's probably gonna rain on us. And there's this big giant complex here that's all emptied out. They must've built something here at one time. We kind of looked around. I really don't like sleeping on concrete. So I'll turn the phone around and I'll show you. This of course would be a great place to stay out of the rain. There's like another empty building over there, another one right there. This goes way back in there, but like I said, it's concrete. So underneath these trees, it's a big canopy and there's a nice soft spot right over there. And I think there's enough trees hanging over that even if it does rain, we'll probably stay out of most of it and we can maybe put up a tarp or something. So I'm gonna move over there before we lose the light. Stay tuned. I'm going to try to show you guys this in the dark. So it's sprinkling out here. It's not, it's not raining hard. It's just kind of drizzling. And all I have is this tarp. So what I did is I just put it over part of me there to keep it kind of, and then this, you know, I don't care if the sleeping bag gets wet, but mostly what's keeping the rain off of us is this gigantic tree gigantic oak tree that we're camped under this thing is massive I think you can probably see the the trunk of it right there I'll show you better in the morning but it's like 70 degrees right now it's just <laughs> just listening to the pitter patter on top of the tarp <laughs> wavy and I are nice and comfortable so we're in here hiding from the rain you might be able to hear it on top of the some thunder and lightning here. And Wavy is hating it. She's scared. Are you scared, little dog? You poor animal. Oh, you poor animal.
it's daylight and I'm gonna make a run for all the stuff, the scooter and all the gear. Let me turn the phone around. Our camp is right under that tree right there. Can't see it, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been hanging out here for an hour or so. It started torrential downpouring. I got wavy tied up to that bar there so she can't run away. Someone left us a nice comfy seat and a bunch of rug. So I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna strip down or down to almost nothing and go bring everything in and we'll start figuring this out. Okay, guys and gals, got everything kind of laid out. Everything was totally soaked. I'm thinking about just leaving that blanket because it's waterlogged and weighs 50 pounds now. But I do want to keep the sleeping bag, so I'll get that ringed out as much as I can. That actually is not soaked because it was inside a really good stuff sack. So yeah, and it's stopped raining for the moment. So we'll probably be back on the road and home here pretty soon. I'm gonna see if the bike starts. I have not started it this morning. Yep. Nice. Okay guys, it's an hour or two later. I wanna show you what we did. Got the bike loaded up, but I've decided I'm gonna leave that tarp because it's getting pretty thin in some spots. It really wasn't. I, I need to get a new tarp and they're pretty easy. Usually you find them on the side of the road if you wait long enough. I'm gonna leave my blanket, which is sopping wet and I have a bunch of blankets on the barge. Enough that even if we get back into cold, we won't freeze, so. I'm just gonna leave that for somebody. Hopefully someone can use it or throw it away or something. <clears throat> I did pack the sleeping bag even though it's sopping wet. Got as much of the water out of it as I could. Put it in the yellow bag. I'm gonna leave my towel because I've got plenty of towels and that one's kind of my, my beater travel towel. I'm probably just gonna leave the beagle here too. She's, she's dead weight. I'm gonna bring her carrier just cause you know I can use that again when I get a new dog, but Wavy, you're gonna stay here, so I'll leave you some water, and maybe you can kill some pigeons or something, so have fun. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't leave my beagle. Come on, start. Uh-oh. Oh, she came to life there. I was worried for a second. It took a minute. Guys, this is, it's like, it just kind of comes in these waves. It like torrentially downpours and then it kind of lightens up a little bit. Sometimes it stops and teases you, makes you think you can go back out and ride in it. And then it starts dumping again. And about the time that I think it's passed, I go down the road and I catch up with the cell again and it just starts dumping on me. And, and it's so bad that this, the belt and the, and the scooter is slipping. And I had to go like really slow on the side of the road. So we're stuck at the rest area for a while until this finally, Probably hear that. All that thunder. <laughs> what a crazy, this is a crazy storm. Guys, there is thunder and lightning. It's just booming. Let's see if I can catch some for you. 
Guys, I put Wavy back in the box because she's absolutely terrified. All right, guys, we are at the Wawa in Crystal River, an hour from where the bars parked in Tarpon Springs, and we've been riding in a torrential downpours all day you'll probably have already seen <laughs> but we're almost home and we're going to be back to it people have been asking where we are and we'll be back uh to making videos and really soon so thanks for sticking around thanks for being patient and uh we'll see you soon <laughs>